Google Keep is a note-taking, to-do list, and reminder app that you can use on PC, Mac, mobile, and smart watches. What's more, because it is a Google app, it also integrates nicely with Gmail, Google Calendar, and all the other Google productivity apps. In this video, I thought I'd demonstrate its best features by showing you how I like to use it. As always, there are time tags listed below, so you can skip ahead at any time. Okay, start by downloading Google Keep from the App Store. On desktop, you can simply navigate to keep.google.com, or if you're already signed into Google in your browser, you can open it from the Applications menu. Back on mobile, you'll need to sign in with a Gmail address. However, if you are already signed into another Google app on your phone, then it should just be a matter of clicking on your account name. Once logged in, you'll be presented with the main screen. Along the bottom of the screen are different options for creating different types of notes. For example, you can create a quick to-do list by clicking on the checkbox icon. I like to create checklists for things like shopping lists and routines that I repeat frequently. For example, I might create a checklist for a daily fitness workout. Let's say I'll start with 30 minutes on the treadmill, followed by another 30 minutes on the rower, and then I'll finish up with 50 step-ups. I can tick off each item as I go, and then once I've completed the list, I simply click on the ellipsis icon and select untick all items, and then my list is ready to go again tomorrow. The next option along the bottom menu is the brush tool, which allows you to write freehand with your finger or using a stylus. To be honest, I've never had a use for this feature, but I can imagine it would be more useful to someone, say, who has an iPad and uses the Apple Pencil. You can delete a note by clicking on the ellipsis icon in the bottom corner and choosing Delete. Deleted notes will remain in trash for seven days before being deleted permanently. The next option along the bottom menu is for creating audio notes, which I use frequently to set reminders for myself. Click on the icon, allow access to your microphone and start talking. For instance, I'll say coffee tomorrow with Wilson at 10 a.m. Google Keep embeds a copy of the audio and also provides a helpful transcription. To turn any note into a reminder, click on the bell icon and set a time and date. Here you can see Google offers some default times during the day which you can customize in settings, or alternatively, you can just add the date and time manually. There's also an option to set a reminder based on your location by adding an address instead of a date and time. However, for this to work, you will need to allow Google constant access to your location, which isn't ideal. Having created my reminder, if I quickly switch over to Google Calendar, I can see that Google has automatically added the entry into my calendar for tomorrow. And what's more, since I'm catching up with Wilson, I can also share the reminder with him by opening up the event in Google Keep, clicking on the same ellipsis icon as before, and this time choosing Collaborate. If the person you are sharing is, is in your contacts, you can st simply start typing their name. Otherwise, just add their Gmail address. Wilson will then receive an email confirming he's been added to the reminder, and it will also appear in his own Google Keep account. The final option along the bottom menu is to add an image, either by taking a photo or by adding one from your photo library. Here I'll take a photo to remind myself to call the plumber. Having added the photo, Google has a neat little feature which lets you grab the text from the image. It's not perfect and may need cleaning up slightly, but having captured the text, I now can simply click on the telephone number to make the call or click on the URL to visit the website. Clicking on the big plus icon in the bottom right corner of the screen is just another way to create a note. Using this method, you can access all the features we've just looked at by clicking on the little plus box. If your note is important, you can pin it, which will keep it on top of all your other notes. And if you finish with the note, you have the option to archive it rather than delete it, which removes it from your home screen, but keeps it safe in your archive folder. Archive notes can be restored at any time by opening the folder from the left-hand menu. Also along the top menu is the option to search for a specific note, and you can toggle between the default grid view, which we're looking at now, or a list view. 
You don't have to be in Google Keep to create new notes. In fact, the majority of my notes I create are from within different apps. For example, I can copy the text from any app, such as here in Gmail, and then use the share button to create a new note from the copied text. The desktop version of Gmail goes one step further by allowing us to open Google Keep in the sidebar and then embed a link to the email within a new note. Similarly, if I want to come back to a web page at a later date, again, I can click on the share button and select Google Keep, which will create a new note with a link to that web page. Finally, one of the things I like to do in Google Keep is to have a bucket list of all the places I'd like to visit. If I find an image of a place I like, I'll copy the photo, open up Google Keep, and paste the photo into a new note. To group my bucket list notes together, I can create a label called Holiday Destinations. As you see from the prompt, a quick way to make a label or to add an existing label is to use the hashtag. So here I can type hashtag and select holiday destinations. I can also give these notes a special color to distinguish them from all my other notes. To view these notes separately, again, click on the left-hand menu and select the label from the list. And that is how to use Google Keep on your mobile. You'll find the desktop version very much similar and just as easy to use. Before you go, if you are considering starting your own YouTube channel or you'd just like to see how I create my videos, I have a free course on my, on my website which I'll link to below. No gimmicks, it is completely free, so I recommend having a look at that. If you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.